Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we're going to do what I call a logical review. Okay, so um, before I do though, to keep our atom up to date, okay, so to keep our packages up to date, you go to edit preferences. Usually this will automatically um, let you know and there'll be an update so you can update that. Okay, so it'll, up, it'll show like the request for updates there in the corner from time to time. But what about the whole thing? You're going here in Windows, I'm not sure about Mac, but on Windows, there's a you can update it just by clicking right here. In Fedora or any GNU Linux system, you really can't do that. So what we have to do is close it down. This is a little annoying, not so bad. Um, let's save it. I'm not sure what I did, but we'll just go ahead and save it. Um, I don't think you can right click that, can you? No, go to the terminal. And what we do is we'll type um, sudo rpme atom and we uninstall it okay and then in to order to reinstall it the the higher version so i went ahead and i downloaded it already to the download section all right it doesn't have a version number but that's just the way they decided to make it so i'll say um cd downloads it's right there. So sudo rpm i atom. And we'll try to install it again. And remember the previous version was 1.0.6. So done, done, open up again. So it's not too bad, a little annoying, but um, there's a reason why, you know, this has to do with security, but they do it that way. 1.0.9. Okay, so we are moving up in the world. Okay, so that's the first part. Second part, going back here, going back here, um, I did mention this is two steps, right? Instantiate it, the class, and then we go ahead and display it but what we also could do is just put here new BMI we could have done this as well right so we could have just gone from two steps to even one step and be done with it already Let's see if this works Excellent. So we really refactored the BMI calculator quite a bit. All right. But this got me thinking. Okay, so let me go back here and I'm going to grab this. When we get this and we say, for example, int or num. We could do um, we could do this uh, query selector as number input element dot value as number. All right, we could do that. So what we're doing here is we're doing number input element I'm just gonna say a equals we're doing this okay this is just an exercise in logic then we're doing string B equals um, a dot value and then we're doing int c equals um, b dot no int dot parse b. All right, so we're doing three stages in order to get the integer value of this particular input element, right? And so I could say this is. Um, Um, C 
plus 5. We'll save that and we'll print the height plus 5 or 55, so 60, right? 4 is 9. So that's working so far. So I can do that. But if I do this, I skip a number of steps and I make it easy just to go from one step to the next. But there's a couple of problems, okay? Just like I said with the um, um, new BMI dot BMI, right? If we skip too many logical steps, we do two things. Number one, we can make mistakes, right? Because, okay, this is a number input element. This is a string. This is an integer. So we can sometimes forget what the object type actually is if we skip too many things at a time. Sometimes this is harder to read. Sometimes it's easier because it's only one thing to read, but it is a long, it's like reading a long sentence. Sometimes you want choppier sentences, sometimes not. It's a, it's a judgment call, okay? But otherwise, there are some things that you cannot do if you go to something like this. It's just something that's just too long. So let's just type, type what this actually is. height and it'll just type it out but it types it out as a double okay not actually an integer interestingly what if I want to say hey I accidentally the user typed in a couple of U's three U's and hit submit well what's actually happening if you go into the console you'll know what's happening and it's giving you an error, isn't it? JavaScript console, it's giving you a format exception. So how? what if you want to say, okay, if the person doesn't realize it's a number input element, you just put like a pop-up sign that everybody loves, of course. Um, but if the person's going to be so stupid to put, you know, strings in a uh, number input element, they kind of deserve a pop-up, right? So let's just be a little bit cruel about this and say, how am I going to actually, if somebody puts the wrong input in there, how am I going to do that pop-up? Well, you could go right here and say, uh, in C, and you could do a try C equals int dot parse. And then on format, format exception, I hope this rings some bells there, um, window.alert, please enter a number as the height. We can always do that, right? And we'll do this, we'll reload. Oh, I'm sorry. So you don't get any errors, but actually what's happening is on the format exception. But if you jumped several loops right here, because value as number already does the int.parse, you would actually lose the ability to do this, right? What are other ways? So by the way, remember, here are brackets. Therefore, if I use the int c right inside of here, the value int c, the variable c, would not be accessible outside. So you have to put lexical scoping again. All right, so we're, keep that in mind when you try this. Try the try. Um, how about if we do, If is there another way? What we could do what you could do here is you could put num or double, okay? But for this purpose, if we use int, there is another function that we could always put comma right here on error, anonymous function, data, whoops, date, data, and something. What's the something? Well, the something, and we'll put C. Again, C plus 8, okay? What, what this does is when you use comma on error colon, that's just the syntax. 
it will int dot int dot parse b but if there's an error to it this data is the data of c okay this data is the data of c it will return a zero so c will equal zero if there's some error so if we do this so you leave it blank right you can even leave it blank so it's null so that would give you an error right it'll print zero plus eight if you put some other number inside of here yy submit it'll be zero Eh. it'll be eight put a number in there it'll be there so because it'll always be default to zero if there's an actual error or and, and so but that's what that means just data just to keep that in mind it will it that's the value of it you just have to remember that or what you could do of course is um, window dot alert uh, please enter a number again it just makes it easier than the try itself diamond parameter type string int oh oh um okay <laughs> mistake what, what this is saying is that here's the information if this information here should return to this section okay and and be the value here but you can't return a, a string or a window a, a function which is window dot alert so it says um, you have to do, you can't do a simplified version here. You'll have to do that's what we'll have to do. Okay, an actual no return. Remember this, the arrow is as if you're saying return. Let's do that instead. So I'm not going to enter anything. Submit. Please enter a number. Enter. Oh, that does work. And how about if I enter? Please enter a number. And it's giving you an error because it's it's the error is not here. The error is actually down here. So if we just said C, we have to do another on error. Okay. Um, or another try h6 please enter an oh actually no you even if you put c there is still no default value right inside of here that's why i wonder if you could do two um on data enter a number comma can you do on error twice no you can't you can only do it once so just keep that in mind. That's another way of doing the try and on format exception right inside of here. So I wanted to introduce this just to remind us that when we try to simplify things, that is a good thing. But at the same time, by putting too much, compacting too much logic, we miss some of our ability to expand the code later. So just something to keep in mind. I'm not going to add a lot of format errors and stuff like that here. Uh, I'm just going to have to say this is good enough and um, we have to draw the line somewhere. You can always expand this to unbelievable levels, but I just want to move on to other concepts that we can learn. Okay, thank you.